All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I wanted to talk to you guys today about the figs. We're gonna cover actually the shape and the form of these particular young trees that we're looking at today. I picked out two individual trees that I think can really give you guys a nice learning experience and a nice little insight into what I'm thinking about. Um, this particular tree here has been in the greenhouse for uh, since the beginning of March. So it's been about uh, 45 days or so that this thing has been somewhat actively growing in the greenhouse with the help of that space heater taking the tarp off the top this thing has received a lot of heat and although we still are not actually past their average last frost this tree has grown quite a bit and you can see here on a lot of these new branches that have formed actually from the apical buds we're going to get into that in a minute but there are terminal buds that I refused to prune last fall. Now, every fall and typically every spring, you would do some sort of pruning on your fig, but I decided this year, especially on the younger ones, especially the ones I wanna get established, I'm not gonna prune them. And the reason for that is because keeping this apical bud intact that we'll see here at the top, this is the, the terminal bud, the, the highest bud on the tree or the highest bud on these branches right? The lateral buds are the ones that are lower on the branching that form as side shoots. If you keep the terminal bud or the apical bud intact, the growth that typically comes from that growth, from that bud, excuse me, is very vigorous, number one. It's very strong growth. It typically fruits a lot easier, and you typically get a really large harvest from that growth. And you even get, by the way, an earlier harvest. So for me in a shorter season climate, and probably for the majority of you guys in the country, I would not really recommend hacking your fig tree back every single year. If you have the option, keep those apical buds or even some of the lateral buds intact. Because that really strong, those strong buds higher up on the tree that typically have swelled a bit, you'll see it in the fall or in the winter time, you can see the buds are much more protruding. They're much more larger in size than the buds lower down on this tree. This growth is really valuable. So for me, I didn't, I didn't do any pruning this winter or this, this fall. And even this spring, I just let the tree grow from these apical buds. And what we have formed as a result is a tree that has five fruiting branches on it. This is still quite a young tree that's getting established. This one's called Sarda, and believe it or not, it, it really is quite young. I did not want to touch this. I didn't want to do anything drastic to this. Uh, all in an effort just to get the form established. That's really my main goal. If I get some fruit this year, which we will, there is some fruits here that are forming on these branches that I see they've gotten enough light and they've set some of the fruits along these new branches. Um, but the form has been my main concern. But now I would think at this point, because the tree has grown quite a bit, you can see these branches are quite long. The tree is now getting somewhat established. The trunk is still not really all that thick. We really need to have it spend some time out here in the, in the wind rather than in that controlled greenhouse. This will thicken up the branches, thicken up the trunk. And then next year we'll really get a lot of fruit set. <clears throat> and you can see kind of the main form here that this tree has is that there's a main trunk from the base there's actually a sucker i've let that grow and even growth from that sucker but from that main trunk i have three scaffolds they're all growing out in different directions the same thing is really to be said for this other tree here is that we have two main scaffolds from the base and then it has kind of grown away from each other like so and actually has some pretty good branching the problem with this tree is that this has been in the greenhouse for about maybe three to four weeks. But this tree was one of the trees that had leafed out in the greenhouse and got hit by that really recent and bad low that we had in the greenhouse where the heater didn't kick on at night and we got to see a, a temperature of uh, in the low 20s in there. And this tree here took some, some damage on that new growth. And what's happened on this one is that all the apical buds were damaged. So as you know, a comparison between this tree and the other is that this tree grew from the apical buds, put out a lot of growth and only grew, by the way, from the apical buds. Whereas this tree 
put out the growth from the apical buds, but that got damaged. And the whole benefit, all the benefits I mentioned of having fruits ripen maybe even two weeks earlier, having a good harvest, having uh, those, those, that new growth actually fruit a lot easier and fruit a lot better, just you know, in general being a good thing, we now lost that benefit from this tree. But it's not the end of the world because now what's happening, I've realized, once you remove that apical bud, and if I were to even do this here and remove the apical bud here by pinching on this new growth, this would form a lot of lower branching, which it's doing right now. It's actively trying to come back and grow from the lateral shoots. So instead of the terminal buds, which are now gone, they're, they're dead, as you can see, here's actually a, a lateral bud that, or a terminal bud, excuse me, that grew, but this growth ended up dying all the way back to this point. And now this lower stuff here, as you can see, this bud right there is starting to leaf out. The same thing over here on this particular branch. The apical bud is now dead. But this lateral stuff that's forming lower down is now increasing the branching of this tree. And I thought, wow, that's, that's really interesting because what you can see over here actually is another example of a tree I have in the greenhouse that I really wasn't liking the branching that it was putting out because we had established the form, right? The tree, the first tree that I showed you, we were still establishing the form, but on this one here, we've established a really amazing form. I'm really proud of this particular tree. And it would be a great example if I could bring it out here and show it to you guys. Because we had really long shoots as we formed three main scaffolds here at a pretty high height. That's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And then from those scaffolds, we formed a lot of good branching. Again, we formed three fruiting branches here. And then on this higher scaffolding over there, it's formed some really good branching. But the problem with it is, is that it's become very lanky. The tree, just in general, by not pruning it as I have every year, kept keeping those apical buds intact by setting up this form. Finally, we're at a point where I said to myself, well, I'd rather see the tree really branch out and put out a lot of branching rather than just continue to grow from this, this apical bud that you see, right? Here's the apical bud growth. And here's a lateral shoot right down here. Look at the difference in that in terms of the dominance. So this tree, and most trees, most of the figs, most really uh, even just fruit trees in general, they have a trouble to leaf out from a lower point if that apical bud is intact. But that's not, believe it or not, after seeing a lot of these trees leaf out, individual cases, I have made an evaluation and said to myself, well, actually, I think I'd rather would have taken taken off the apical buds in the fall or the winter. And in actuality, I think even doing it in the spring is probably the best time. Because now that we have established this form over here that we're looking at, this is again a really great example. I would rather have this form leaf out and branch out, excuse me, branch out from this point. We have these long, nice, lanky scaffolds. They're away from each other. Look how much light this tree is receiving. Nothing's kind of on top of each other. It's very easy for this tree to receive the light that it needs. As you can kind of see, I mean, just look at the light hit this tree. It really has an open canopy to it. So now, I think what will be a really good example or a good idea is actually to remove the apical buds, either by pinching or leaving the apical buds intact until next season where in the fall uh, or the winter or in the spring, we do indeed remove these apical, apical buds with our pruning shears instead of our thumbs. And that will create the branching that we want. Even when done, as I just showed you guys, done in the spring and not necessarily done in the, in the fall, you get a lot of branching up here, which is exactly what I want. You can see that the apical bud died it didn't even remove this myself. It died from the cold. All this new growth is forming from a lower point. And even the lateral buds, which are not a part of that new growth, there's a bud there and there's a bud right here, which are growing very vigorously. And this is gonna get me, again, that branching, that form that I want, because this is, I think, honestly, the most ideal scenario for these young trees is that we get them to this longer length, we get the form set up, 
We have good scaffolding. They're away from each other. They're getting the light that they need. They're maximizing that light. Um, I mean, look at that. And then from this point, we then form all of the branching that we want because the more of this branching that we get, and especially the further away it is from each other, the more we can set up these systems of branches here, right? So we have a system of branching here. There's a system of branching down here. There's a system of branching over here, which probably should be a little bit more to the right. Again, a system of branching over there. This is gonna maximize the amount of apical or terminal buds that I then have for the following season. So although this year, I only have five terminal buds on this tree. If I remove all the terminal buds next season, this is then gonna leaf out and form many, many more terminal buds that typically aren't gonna be as lanky or as long in growth as you see here. And because I have now more terminal buds, I'm setting myself up for the, even the following season to have a really spectacular form on this particular tree. And now I have, as I said, the big benefit of having those apical buds, but in a much higher quantity, right? We've set up the structure, we've maximized the light, the branching is away from each other. It's not, you know, like this, where all the branches are coming together like that and the leaves are crisscrossing and the leaves are shading each other out. We've got the leaves really far away from each other, the branching really far away from each other. And then we form all these systems of branches along these, this branching here. And if we can do that, that's how we get, you know, hundreds potentially of fruits on these potted figs. Or even, you know, just in general, on your in-ground figs, the same thing can apply um, just in a, a larger sense. So that's, that's really it here, guys. I think hopefully that made sense. I know I'm trying to, maybe I'm even beating a dead horse here and explaining this in a repetitive way. But uh, I think that gives you the full picture of that. We establish the form from a younger age. We get these long, lanky scaffolds that are then far away from each other. They're going to be permanent remember that and then from those permanent scaffolds we try to induce by intervening and doing some pruning whether that's in the in the spring with our thumb or we can use our pruning shears in the fall and the winter to then get really good branching that we want on these scaffolds once we re attain really good branching the tree then sets itself up that's the perfect scenario to get as much fruit as possible right we don't wanna have a lot of these fruiting branches in a very dense space. So that's why it's important in these early years to spend the time on the form. Get yourself some stakes. Stake a lot of these branches away from each other um, so that they can get the structure, the permanent structure that it needs to be able to form all those fruiting branches, those terminal buds that we want year after year uh, that will inevitably fruit in a really high degree and at ease in an ease <laughs> so all right everybody that that is the video there i hope that made sense thank you for watching this one uh that's a lot there on the uh the form of fig trees and we'll talk to you guys soon hit that subscribe button we'll catch you guys for the next one take care